Nicolas Pouya, who happened to be, or used to be, a postdoc researcher at the same university that I'm going to, at IT University in Copenhagen. So I'm really, really thrilled about Nicolas being here. Nicola used to work for the DemTech project at ITU, which was a research project towards developing electronic election technology. In the past, Nicola was a PhD student in the Gallium research team at INRIA Paris, oh, hey, I'm going to butcher this, Roconcourt, Roconcourt? Yeah. Um, with focus on designing programming languages, and in particular, metaprogramming. Today, Nicola will be pre presenting and uh, giving us a presentation on the experimental language Ling, created in collaboration with researchers from IT University Copenhagen and the University of Chalmers. 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 French was not my main language. Please help me to welcome Nicola Puglia. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here today uh, to introduce this, this new programming language that I've been uh, working on uh, the last few months, but that comes from uh, research done earlier. So uh, programming language design is something deep to my heart. Heard. We really need better programming languages. And here, I'm addressing a case where uh, functional programming strongly typed, the case where it's not enough, the case where this high-level view and modular view is lacking the precise resource management. So let's try to combine this. So as an introduction, let's pick up uh, optimizations. So what do we want about optimizations of a program? This could be a manually done by the programmer or done automatically by the compiler. We want those optimizations to be improving the program for performances. This is the first requirement, but it's also at the same time very difficult to guarantee because systems are so complex today that you might be removing some lines of code and still your program is uh, slower. This kind of weird effects. But anyway, at least those optimization should be safe. You should not turn a correct program into an incorrect program. We already have way too much incorrect programs everywhere. There is no need for the compilers to uh, optimizations in general to, to make more of it. <clears throat> uh, it's better if these optimizations are automatic and automatically done by the compiler. Still, um, <clears throat> if it's done automatically, we should, it should be predictable by the programmer when it applies and when it doesn't. Let's take a general case of optimizations. Let's say that you have two parts in your program, uh, f, f and g, and that f is reading some input data and producing some intermediate data, and that g is reading back this intermediate data to produce some output data. This is happening all the time in a program, <coughs> and in some cases, many cases maybe, um, the, the two programs, f and g, could be combined together, melt together, we're going to call that fusion. We're going to say that we fuse F and G such that it reads the input data and writes the exact same output data, but is not allocating any of the intermediate data. So it's not always possible, but what this language will do is that it will guarantee you that it happens when you think it does. So if you think it should fuse and it doesn't, you get an error by the compiler. And what you, what you can do <coughs> is change F to make it a better producer of the data. I'm going to, exp it's going to be a bit clearer later on. Or you can change G to make it a better consumer. Or you can just decide that this cannot be uh, optimized the way and that we are going to allocate this data. <coughs> okay, so the, the critical areas in which this kind of optimizations are are required and actually done by hand all the time by the programmers is uh, the following. Numerical computation, all the embedded systems that are so few resources available, uh, drivers and kernels, and something also dear to my heart, uh, security and cryptography, where not only we want the, the programs to be fast, but we also need the program to behave independently on the, on the, on the 
secret data with, uh, to avoid uh, timing, side channels, and so on. <clears throat> so what do we have? Okay, so we have terms, um, and we're not going to speak too much about them. They, they can provide a form of meta programming that I'm not going to, to, to speak too much about, but you can think of something much better than CPP or much better than templates in C++. Uh, but also, they are going to be used for data, like just like this integers or doubles and, and, and operations on that. What we're going to talk a lot about is are uh, these processes, and they're here to describe the behavior, the, the actions we do on data, that is reading and writing uh, uh, data. <clears throat> Types are here to enforce a safe use of data by terms. Namely, we don't want to mix an int and a boolean or an int and an array. <clears throat> While uh, sessions, they are the types for the processes and they are here to enforce that we get the behavior we wanted. That is, if we say that we should read an int, we should not be writing something else or writing uh, an int. We have uh, dependent types and dependent <coughs> sessions, which I'm not going to discuss here because it's, a, it's a, uh, another big topic, but it's crucial that this has been sought out before in the language because this enables formal verification and convenient formal verification. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, dual sessions, which enables uh, fusion, the optimization I was mentioning about, and we're going to see what duality means. Okay, so where does this language come from? I took inspiration from many languages, from purely functional, uh, strongly typed languages such as Haskell, or theories such as Martin Love type theory and calculus of construction, um, and also fully developed uh, programming languages for proving such as Kot, Agda, and Idris. <clears throat> All the process part uh, inherits from the Pi calculus, uh, for which we might know better uh, Erlang, that is inspired also from the Pi calculus in some extent. <clears throat> and also there's, there's, a, there's a more precisely all the research uh, on session types and linear logic has been inspiring for me. Uh, and there's two line of works uh, developed by uh, me and colleagues at uh, IT in Copenhagen and Chalmers in Sweden. Okay, so uh, this is bad. Okay, so this is supposed to be a nice summation. Uh, let's, it's not big of a problem, there is only one there. So let's pick an example with uh, matrix multiplication. I'm going to tempt something. Oh, no. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so uh, we have two matrices A and B and that we want to multiply. And what, what, we, what we know is that in, in a, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is really not good. Mm. Now, someone told me so. Anyway, so <clears throat> that, that's, that's not, a, uh, not much of a big deal, I think. So we have a row. For each row of A and each column of B, we are going to, to zip these two, these two vectors that, which are of the same size to produce a single, uh, a single vector um, with the multiplication of those. And this vector, we are going to sum it up. So the functional representation is, uh, so which we don't really see here, but <clears throat> anyway, so we are building this vector that is the multiplication of them and then summing it right away. So we are building it for no good reason, for modularity. It's a nice way to express it, uh, the, the, the prime in that way. <clears throat> okay, so at the end, we should be able to write uh, this, this program such that we uh, think to, allocate uh, this intermediate, intermediary vector, but then it disappears. Okay, so here is the outline. So uh, we'll see a first thing program, then we'll talk more about types and the role as an approximation tool. Then we can cover duality, allocation, fusion, and then back to this mat uh, matrix multiplication example. Okay, <clears throat> so here is the first program. It's called Dabble. And the proc, uh, the proc keyword is marking the beginning of a process. Then we have we are declaring two channels A and B 
on which uh, and, and, and channels, they have a session. The session can be this question mark int or bang int. Question mark means read and uh, bang means write. <clears throat> so we must read an int on A, which we do with this let arrow syntax. We give the name X to what we've read in A. The colon, uh, in the, uh, the dot indicates the sequence. <clears throat> and then we do a write. Uh, on B, and we are writing X plus X. <clears throat> okay, the, the typing of this language is ensuring that we are doing a single read and a single write on these channels. Okay, now let's make a new process that is feeding 21 as the input value. <clears throat> so it's a new process that has a single channel on which uh, we should write an int on B, <clears throat> and now we allocate a channel A on which we are going to write a, 21 into A, and then we can call our double program defined previously with A and B. Okay, notice now the equal sign. It means that it's a definition. Therefore, we can always replace a double by the definition. So we get the following program, where we just place in the, the double, the, the definition of double. So here we see the allocation the assignment, the, 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 the write, and then the read. Now it's a good case where fusion, a trivial case where fusion can apply, and it's going to replace <coughs> this allocation write, write and read by a single local definition. And this local definition, they, these are really just at the level of, uh, of um, at the static level. So they can be and will be expanded away, which, uh, gives us this final program, which is just uh, writing a 42 directly into B. Okay, so with this simple program, we've seen how to declare processes, uh, their channels, allocation, read and write. <clears throat> okay, let's speak about types and type systems. Okay, so if you believe that type system are just here to reject a uh, program, some kind of a bad code telling you that your perfectly fine program has to be rejected or that you think that Java, C Sharp, or C++ are what we have as good examples of type systems, or finally, you might prefer dynamic typing uh, and say that unit testing can successfully replace a type system. In all these cases, I would say that you're wrong, or at least that you should think again. Okay, actually, I think a good type system should be a positive thing. It should explain you why and where your program can or will fail it should also empower the compiler, empower the compiler for optimizations, exactly the case that I'm describing with this fusion thing. It is critical that we have the right types for this to happen. And uh, another example is that sometimes we can make the type so precise that it automates the program. That is, the, the type is so precise that there is no need to write the program anymore. <clears throat> but here, let's Let's remember this, that a type is an approximation, and this approximation is here in particular to enable an abstraction. So uh, int is an approximation for uh, five and seven, for instance. But uh, an integer that is odd would be a more precise type, or an integer that is prime would be a more precise type or an integer that is equal to five would be an even more precise type. So we, we could have a wide range of, of approximations for these types. <clears throat> As I say, the types are here for the data, and sessions are here for the behavior. So we will see what approx this approximation means for behaviors. <coughs> okay, let's, speak, uh, let's take another uh, example. We have uh, a process um, div mode, which is uh, reading two inputs, A and B, and writing two outputs, D and M. So where D is the division of A and B, and M is the modulus of, of A and B. So uh, we're going to write this as a process, and we'll see that processes can be combined in parallel and sequentially. Um, moreover, we're going to give a type or session to this process, and we'll see how this gives a way to have a precise control on the interface. <clears throat> uh, finally, uh, remember that all the time, these channels must be used exactly once. Okay, 
So this slide is a bit scary. Uh, I've put actually six programs, six versions of the programs at the same time. <clears throat> and five versions of the type, such that we can go through uh, some of them. So uh, the type is in green there, and this is a first program that, that does this read and write all in sequence. <clears throat> this one with this pipe there, it's, it's saying that we do this in parallel, the two reads in parallel, and then the two writes in parallel. Uh, all in sequence, but in a different order. Or some sequential, some parallelism. We can do many variations. And all, all of these are accepted with this same type, which says that we should read on A, read on B, write on D, and write on, on M. Notice this braces. This tell you that you have the choice of the processing order, meaning that all of these are valid. Okay, now you can be more precise about the kind of processes that you want to write. For instance, if you say that with this square column, you can enforce that these channels are used uh, in order from left to right. Only this program remains valid. This is making the life of the one using your process much easier, as we'll see later with uh, duality. <clears throat> okay, you could say, I want all these channels to be used in parallel, used independently, except that it won't be actually useful for this situation because we would have to write the division in the modulus without having access to the, to the inputs. We can be slightly more fine-grained, saying that we use these brackets that mean uh, in parallel, to, and this, colon, this bracket colon to say in sequence, to say we want the reads to be done in parallel and then the writes to be done in parallel, which gives this, only this, this middle program is, is, is valid. We can have variations uh, like that. So this was, uh, what we should get from this is uh, at least remember this, this, uh, this different choices we have, like any order from left to right and all in parallel. <clears throat> Okay, uh, duality. So now we've, we've been thinking of these channels a bit like if, they were, if this was memory, and this is exactly my intent. But just for a moment, let's think of it as a protocol. If I am writing an end, then the other side should be ready to receive an end. So there is this duality, and this duality will work also with this, with this um, uh, kind of array or struct or tuple types. Uh, if, <clears throat> if one side is uh, as the choice of the processing order, then the other side has absolutely no choice. So, the dual, so the, um, if we have a session S, the dual is going to be written with a, this tilde. So if we send an A, the dual is going to be receive an A. Uh, braces, the dual is going, uh, that braces, that means any processing order, the dual is going to be the most strict processing order, that is completely in parallel. Um, and this is from left to right, and the dual is still something from left to right, but we have to dualize inside. Okay, so just a quick example to see how this goes. So we have uh, this, this, uh, this pair of an int and a pair of a double and an int together with this annotation that tells us that uh, what we should do with it. That is, we should write an int, but we can do this now or do this later because this is this braces. But at least we have to receive the double and then receive the int. Okay, so now let's see what the other guy has to do in, in front of us. So we put the tilde and then we work through the definition. That is, the braces become brackets, the bangs become um, uh, question marks, the in order sequence stays in order, and the question marks become bang. The resulting thing is that the opposite process must receive an int independently from uh, writing this double and int in this order. In particular, it cannot read an int and then send it back on this one. This would create a deadlock. This language, when used with this parallel uh, and concurrency setting, <coughs> is deadlock free. Okay, allocation and fusion. <clears throat> so, 
Okay, so let's pick, let's, um, let's pick this general setting where we have uh, two processes, uh, F and G, and they are following uh, something dual. So let's, it could be anything, any session S, and they happen to be following S and the dual of it. So this new syntax, which has this square brackets, which should remind you that it must be used in parallel, <coughs> forces uh, C and D to be used in parallel and used uh, independently. This is uh, a case where fusion is guaranteed to be able to happen. So in all these settings where you manage to make the two parts of the program be of a dual session, then you're guaranteed that you can remove this allocation away. Maybe you want the same thing, but you don't want the parallelism. Uh, so we have this other uh, syntax for new, again, with the same duality requirement, but you can put the processes in sequence. This is slightly more uh, restrictive because you really have to do all that has to be done with C before D. <coughs> At the same time, this enables the real allocation, the allocation that cannot be fused. Okay, so let's pick an example. So we have two processes, F and G, and they, they, are, <coughs> they, both uses, they are both using braces. And here I'm introducing a new notation, this, this caret 100. This, this is to show that we don't only have tuples, but arbitrary arrays. So here, this guy is, is going to write uh, integers, 100 integers, in some order that we do not know. Maybe it, it goes from left to right, let's say. This other process wants to read all of these 100 uh, ends, but in potentially different order. And if we, don't, if we don't change F and G, then we have no other choice than to have some intermediate data uh, that is allocated. Then we run F, it's going to write all of the locations <laughs> in the order it wants, uh, and G is going to read all the integers in the order G wants. So, <clears throat> uh, this is a case where if you don't put the alloc flag here, the new will complain and say, the compiler will complain and say, okay, uh, I can't fuse that. So you have to acknowledge the fact that this is going to be really allocated. If you don't want that, you can change F. You can change F to say, okay, actually can work a, a bit more and, and write this 100 ints in parallel. If you can do that, then the whole thing fuse or you might want to change G and say, actually, I could read them in parallel. Fine, in, in this case, this will fuse, or other changes to F and G. <clears throat> okay, so we, we have allocation, so we can go back to matrix multiplication. So um, I'm not going to get into the details of this, uh, of this operations, but what we have to, to, uh, to get is that we can write a zip function in and, and derive it from a much more general uh, function that works not only for doubles and not only for multiplication, but any uh, free types and any operation f. Um, and in, in the very sugary version of this language, we can write it as short as this. Okay, the summation also could be done uh, just for doubles and, 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 and addition, but in functional programming, we, we tend to prefer uh, uh, write once and for general combinators such as this for left. Again, I'm skipping the, 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 the details, but we can see that it's uh, using a temporary variable to accumulate this, uh, this uh, results of f, which then becomes the addition on doubles. <clears throat> so now we can put, put together this zip function and the sumd function, and we have this intermediary data that is this vector in the middle that I was mentioning, which uh, um, the theory tells us that we can fuse it away. <clears throat> so uh, a fused version uh, here, manually fused uh, version uh, is this, <coughs> where we see that is, this, is, this is mixing the summation, uh, the summation uh, with the zero and the plus and the multiplication in a single function. So some kind of conclusion. Uh, we get to combine precision and modularity. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, to get, and we get a cost-free abstraction. This particular optimization, which is, which is uh, quite general, it subsumes uh, uh, various kinds of inlinings uh, and, and other uh, fusion of intermed intermediary data. It is predictable, uh, safe, and automatic. So <clears throat> this, this, um, this language and the tool chain that goes with it is completely open source, and I, um, and I hope you will have a look, try, help to contribute. Um, feel free to ask questions, report bugs, and so on. Thank you. Okay, anybody with questions for Nicola, please go to one of the four microphones on the side. Okay, so we're starting with the microphone over there. Um, yes, okay. um, uh, yes. Is it possible to use this language, for example, to uh, synthesize logic or uh, asynchronous logic, maybe clockless logic, uh, in a, uh, in a, in a, on a chip? I'm not sure I get the question. To, uh, to use it for what? Uh, synthesizing logic to actually do your computation in hardware. To synthesize? Uh, logic. Synthesizing uh, logic. Lo logic circuits. Uh, logic circuits. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, I mean, so this language and the tool chain with it is really new, right? So this is, there is still plenty of bugs, plenty of n not fully implemented features, but the, the theory uh, can, can clearly do this kind of thing. So, and, and we can have a, a very, uh, high-level way of writing uh, things like that. But I think the, 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 the main domain to which it applies is situation where uh, performances are really critical. So I don't know, m maybe this is the, 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 the case, but otherwise maybe Haskell is good enough. Okay, one question over here, please. Yeah, so I was wondering about the different annotations you could do in the function definition where you could say like in which order you want to read it or if you want to read it in parallel or in serial. Um, I was wondering, couldn't most of this be deduced by the compiler anyway if you could do that or not because you have specified the flow and it's a pure function. So I was wondering if it's not redundant to have six different functions for different ways of accessing data. Yeah, so um, as, um, as a first step, uh, in type systems, it's always easier to check that the types are right than to try to guess and in, what we say infer what are the right types. So, uh, and it's not always what you want, but it's true that we can, uh, in, we could infer quite a lot of types. Actually, the way the, 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 the type checker works on processes is actually bottom up. It starts from the leaves of your program and, and is growing up the type and then checking up that it matches your definition. Uh, but it is actually quite important to have a way to uh, not give the most precise type, to, uh, to have some leeway when you're defining a type, to have something slightly more approximative, and then right, you say, oh, I can use them in any order, and then you say, yes, but I'm going to say uh, left to right for now, right, so. Okay, so can I have a pro process that produces like one integer at a time and have them consumed by a process that just takes one integer and just all read them all in serial or do I have to define several versions of my consumer? Um, so may maybe, so one thing we cannot really do now is to have a process that will be parametric on the kind of order, uh, processing order uh, we have. But at the same time, we cannot really write the code in a parametric way, so it's not necessarily uh, working. Okay, I'm sorry, no dialogues, please <laughs> ask. More questions on the other side? Uh, One question over here. Thanks for the talk, very interesting stuff. I was wondering, and I listened to this, uh, uh, the, the idea a data flow language pops in my head. So it has been like a massive parallelization of data processing being in your vision, kind of? Yeah, so, so functional programming is already uh, dead data flow uh, in, in many ways. The thing is that typically functional programming uh, sort of, it, it, it's a success in many ways, but it, it fails at being precise enough uh, 
um, about when and how much allocation is made. And this is what I'm trying to fix here, such that you know that by default, maybe you will use Fusion most of the time everywhere, and it just like gets out of the way, um, just like GHC would optimize uh, your functions, but the cases where it fails, instead of just getting slow for no reason, then you at least see precisely where this uh, issue appears in your program. And so you can decide to choose between allocating or changing your program so you know where these issues are. So a toolkit to actually make that work eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay, one question over here on this microphone in the blue jacket. Um, <clears throat> good day. Um, does the link compiler uh, produce native executables? I mean, yeah, so, so, it's a, so, so far it's, it's quite early, but uh, it, it's producing uh, C code, for instance. Um, the, the, the C backend is, is the only one I have, so th there is this, this link language, there is some operations that stays in the same language, and the final one uh, so far is the, the C backend. It's not complete, it's not uh, nice, it's not optimal, but it's, uh, it, it's producing precise uh, code that is quite portable. So it's not inconceivable to run bare metal code in Linux. Yeah, so, something I've not mentioned is that um, I've I've looked at the code on that was work that was on the radio badge, and I found one instance of matrix multiplication. So I extracted the matrix multiplication uh, from Ling into C and and put on the on the on the device. And, and you can we can actually change maybe the the camera to see the the wobble uh, uh, animation. Can we change the camera? Okay, there is one more question on this side, please. So you're saying that link has dependent types. Does it uh, extend to linear types as well? Can you quantify over a process, for example? <clears throat> um, yeah, so let's make the distinction between what can be done with the type system, so that is, what can I check, <laughs> and then what can I translate into uh, C or, or runnable code. So what can I check is indeed we have uh, normal dependent types, but we have dependent sessions. That means I can say I'm receiving, um, I'm receiving an int x, and then if this x is uh, below 10, then I'm supposed to receive a Boolean. Otherwise, I'm supposed to send something else. So we can have, the, the protocol can depend on actual uh, data. Uh, we can also, like again, in the checking, uh, send and, and, and receive processes, sessions, types, uh, functions, and pretty much right, anything that can has, have a type. Okay, we have time for one more question yeah. from the internet. Is there a question from the internet? The internet is silent. That's a rare thing, <laughs> okay. Then we go with you, you're the last one tonight. Thank you. Um, when you uh, thought about implementing this language, um, did you try to come up with an implementation instead as a library or an extension to GHC Eskel? Or yeah. is it possible <coughs> to no, do it's, this it's without a, dependent types, basically? It is, it, is, it is a real good question. So we don't, so the, the, the dependent types, uh, is, is an addition, right? So, so we could have this language with other dependent types. It would be interesting already uh, and, and would be easier to integrate into Haskell, for instance. Um, the, main, the main issue is that there's, there's linearity and there's, this handling of sessions. It's really difficult to implement as an embedded DSL. Uh, so this could be a deeply embedded DSL with quasi-quotations, for instance, in Haskell. So this is, I guess, a future project. Like, to me, it seems simpler to just write a new language, but I agree uh, that, that a, a potentially a bigger project would be to integrate it into Haskell or Agda or Idris. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please a round warm applause for Nicolas Pouillard. <laughs>